My name is Geneva House and I'm doing a PhD in music here at York. Neil's my supervisor and I'm looking at contemporary composition for Gamelan in Britain. And I'm John Jacobs. I'm uh, also a PhD student here at the moment. Um, PhD by composition, but primarily for Gamelan. All for Gamelan so far. How did you both uh, get involved with Gamelan in the first place? I think for me, um, I was very keen to study non-Western music before I went to university. I was going to do a physics degree, but I'd spent my gap year in India and studied some music there. And I thought, right, I'm going to come back to the UK and find an ethnomusicology course and do that. And it was quite late in the summer holidays, and there didn't seem to be that many places that did ethnomusicology. And I thought, oh, York, they have a gamelan. I'm not quite sure how I knew that York had a gamelan. Uh, but I came up here and, and had an interview and I was lucky enough to get a place. A few people had taken up places here. Um, so yeah, I started playing and my first term I joined the Gamelan group. Hmm, I suppose for me, uh, similarly, really I began when I started as a first year undergraduate here. So uh, I probably like quite a lot of people, I'd had a, a one-off workshop um, whilst I was a GCSE music student. Our, our music teacher had uh, correctly judged that quite a few of us would be enthusiastic and took us down to South Bank and we did a, a morning's gamelan workshop and then went and watched a matinee of cats in the afternoon or something but gamelan was the, the enjoyable part of the day really, that and hanging out in Covent Garden as a teenager. <laughs> so how long have you been playing gamelan now? Um, I arrived as an undergraduate here in 94 so 16 years. It's not always, it, it's not been intensive learning all the time, so there have been spells of, of properly studying it and then other spells of um, you know, just doing it as a, a less serious hobby alongside full time work and the odd spell where I was not in York and not near a gamelan. So. <laughs> and how old are you? I started in 97, so 14 years, but not consistently at all, so I played for three years when I was here, and then another year when I was doing my masters at SOAS. Um, in between that I was living in Japan and India and, and in London as well, but not playing. So I've come back to it again since coming back to York in 2010, nine, yeah. Could you tell us your experience playing gamelan? My experience? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you mean sort of uh, generally? Uh, how yes, I feel about it. Yes, how do you feel about play, mm. playing Gamelan with group? And maybe if you could tell us also your experience being in Indonesia as well. Mm. Um, I suppose I, mm, I suppose there are various things that I've consistently enjoyed about playing Gamelan, um, which are not which are not isolated to, to gamelan music, but uh, but which probably are connected with um, particular features of typical rehearsal process, I suppose. Uh, so, yeah, we were just listening to uh, to Neil Sorrell being interviewed a moment ago, and, and uh, of course he was uh, he, he was talking about his his experience of, of enjoying um, that that feeling of, of knowing what's going on around you, I suppose. Um, and, and certainly I suppose I had a, um, a similar feeling. The point at which I decided I wanted to carry on with Gamelan, the point at which I decided I wanted to go to Java, was uh, probably during my third year as an undergraduate. And, um, and we'd, we'd taken the Gamelan on a, on, on a trip down to um, Haverford West, I think it was. It was a, um, an arts festival in southwest Wales. And so we, we did a, roughly a week of doing a, a workshop in a school in the morning and then doing a concert in the evening incorporating the school kids who had done a workshop and we, so we did a few of those gigs so lots of carrying instruments around which is uh, one of those features of playing gamelan and then uh, and then a gig in a local arts centre I think at the end of the week and perhaps because of the intensity of playing, because of playing it every day, but perhaps also because I just started to reach uh, that particular stage of understanding, 
you know, similarly, I had that feeling of, of, of I was playing an instrument, um, but I had a very good awareness of what else was going on around me, which was in stark contrast to some of the other musical activities I was doing here at the time. Um, I said not unique to Gamelan, perhaps. Uh, I'd, I'd felt the same thing maybe when I got involved with playing big band music as a teenager. And I think that has a lot in common uh, for me, um, well, purely from the sort of point of view of, of experience as a player, not, not in terms of the way the music works. Uh, but I, I suppose because it was a music that was connected to the music I was listening to, connected to the music that I was learning to play by ear, crucially, um, it meant that uh, I, I felt as if I had a, a good awareness of what was going on in the rest of the ensemble to a much greater extent than, than some um, orchestral experiences where I was desperately counting 112 bars rest and then that's just long enough to get you really anxious about the high entry and then uh, after playing trumpet and then come in and split the notes and then you've got another 112 bar rest to worry about the next entry and the way that you messed up the previous one and this is um, this is not so typical in gamelan I would say where most of the time you're playing your part and if you go wrong it's not likely to be the end of the world as long as most people have a fair awareness of what else is going on it's, it's all rescuable if uh, if you've got that kind of uh, ensemble cohesion Hmm. I, I suppose even before that, the, the, maybe part of what had really drawn me in and had made me want to reach that stage of understanding though, was probably um, the ways in which it obviously contrasted with music that I already played. Um, I was already interested in composition and so I suppose naturally enough, um, probably like, like a lot of people who do a bit of composing, it, it's kind of driven by trying to understand how, how the music works in, in some sense, I suppose. Um, I remember as a first year asking an older student where the strong beat was exactly, um, it, and, and getting the response that oh, it doesn't really have a strong beat. And I don't know if I agree with the answer exactly, but at least thinking about that makes you start thinking about what the meaning of strong beat is. It makes you start thinking of not just about Indonesian music or specifically central Javanese music and the, and the way it's structured, but it also uh, makes you ask questions about music you've already learned in, in a slightly different way. Uh, similarly with harmony, I suppose. Clearly, um, there's, there is harmony in gamelan music, but the way the music is thought about by the players as they're playing it doesn't tend to be in terms of the vertical harmony as it goes by. So. Uh, again, this is an interesting question for me to to think about the the likely differences in in the way a music's going to come about, depending on whether the musicians and composers specifically are thinking about it in terms of the vertical harmony or letting that arise out of melody. Uh, so. Have you ever composed in gamelan? Yes. Well, that's that's what I'm studying now. So so that that's what my. Um, what my PhD submission will be. Um, but I started not long after I started playing gamelan. So um, happily, um, this ensemble is, is a comfortable one in which to start composing. I know that's, um, that's important to Neil, I, I would say, for good educational reasons, as well as the, the pragmatic need to put together a concert, sometimes with not so many expert players around. Um, yeah. Tell me about the first piece you composed for the Golden Stag. Oh. <laughs> well, arranged. Well, okay, yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, my, my first dabbling wasn't a composition, it was an arrangement. Um, so we were doing something that was uh, definitely uh, Wyang inspired, I suppose you'd say, rather than Wyang. So, um, Did you use Wyang in I think there was a bit of puppetry. There, there were lots of different media in, in this particular show and there was one section where there was a battle scene where uh, where the, the narrative was going to be conveyed by having a sort of football style commentary two two commentators um, saying what was going on uh, in, in the battle and so uh, did an arrangement of the uh, the match of the day theme <laughs> at that point of course you know I hadn't I hadn't fully got to grips with how cello note works so there was no clever sort of movement of the of the cadence there that was you know, kind of West, Western conception in, in a lot of ways but you know of course that that problem 
when you set yourself that problem, you say, right, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and arrange match of the day for the gamma, and then then of course you have to ask yourself all sorts of questions about tuning systems, about about what makes a particular piece a particular piece. Um, could you tell us your experience um, playing gamelan in Indonesia? Yes, well, um, well, yeah, so I've had two trips to Indonesia. The first of those was um, uh, on the Dharma Siswa um, scheme, and that was um, 98 to 99. So, 98 and so you right. composed the music first before you went to Indonesia? That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I went back for six months, um, 2005, I think, 2005, um, As it happened, well, I went out on the Dharma Siswa scheme, obviously, uh, because I, I intended to uh, study uh, Karavitan more seriously. Um, it turns out that at SDSE, EC now, of course, um, in, in Solot, the, the practical sessions start quite early in the morning. Um, from, well, from my point of view, quite early in the morning. We don't, we don't, normally, we, we don't normally start lectures at 7.30 in the morning in, in York. <laughs> and I discovered that I'm not very, very keen on playing gamelan at 7.30 in the morning, actually. <laughs> I really enjoy it, but there's a time in the morning where, where uh, it doesn't agree with me quite so well. And, but, but also, uh, perhaps more importantly, I, I took my trumpet with me and uh, I, I, I'm not playing very much at the moment and, and you know, I, I haven't really focused on trumpet playing in the way that um, someone, someone who's going to try and be a professional trumpeter has. But it's an instrument that I, I felt comfortable with and, um, and felt comfortable um, improvising on as well and, and learning music orally but, you know, because of an interest in jazz. That, that was quite comfortable for me. And of course, uh, turning up in Java, there were plenty of first year undergraduate students there who already knew a lot more gamelan than, than, than I do now, and perhaps some of them more than, more than I'm likely to know at all. You know, some of them had come from SMKE, the, the sort of. Uh, Kadawa, that's, for, that's right, yeah, so people who have been specialising throughout secondary school. And some of them also will have come from gamelan playing families. Um, whereas there are not that many experienced trumpet players in solo, so uh, so I found myself uh, getting some slightly more interesting opportunities as a trumpet player. And and also very nice, I suppose, was that uh, th there was a, a, a quite fuzzy boundary really between gamelan and non-gamelan in within com contemporary music in solo, at least. Um, so I found myself getting uh, invited to play in some groups where sometimes gamelan instruments would be used, um, but not as a complete gamelan necessarily. There was no problem with, with mixing both Western and Javanese instruments. Um, and also no problem with mixing um, quite Western and quite Indonesian approaches to the diatonic instruments as well. So I, I, so I played in ensembles that had some players who were primarily from a gamelan background, others primarily from a Koronchong background, and then others like me who had a, 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 a more typical sort of Western range of experiences behind them, um, particularly um, playing with uh, Pat Sadra's group, um, uh, Sonosani Ensemble he had just set up at that time, and I think was probably his first, um, his, his, his first group where he was using a lot of Western instruments actually. Which was interesting because if, because he didn't have a, 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 a large background of, of European harmony, for example, uh, but this wasn't a problem for him as a composer. He was quite happy to uh, communicate compositional ideas um, in, a, in a very descriptive way, I suppose, and, and then he'd just get his players to, to try things out until there was something that he and the musician enjoyed. Mm -hmm. so.